The landscape of Hawaii is filled with what we refer to as canoe plants. These plants might even be growing in your school playground. So what is a canoe plant? Canoe plants were brought here to the Hawaiian Islands by our ancestors, the Polynesian voyagers. These voyagers carefully selected plants that would provide them with everything they needed when they arrived here. We call it their botanical toolkit. This toolkit of plants and the Polynesian voyagers traveled to Hawaii by canoe. That's why we call them canoe plants. Let's explore the canoe plants here at Limohuli Garden to find out how they were used by our ancestors. I love making sugarcane juice from the ko plant. It also makes a sweet snack too. So ulu makes a really good glue. Its gummy sap makes things perfect to stick together. Kukui is always beautiful in LA. We know you can name this plant. That's right, it's tea or ki in Hawaiian. This plant has many important uses in our culture. You've probably seen tea on your dinner plate. It's still used today as a wrap for a pua'a or pork. Our ancestors also used tea for shelter from the rain to help heal wounds and display status. Another way of using this plant is to use it for making a lei. Let's make a tea leaf lei together. All right, so now we're gonna learn how to make a tea leaf lei. So the first thing that we're going to do is step one, ma'e ma'e, or clean. And the proper way to clean the tea leaf plant is to hamo, or take off, the old leaves that we're not gonna use. We can use them under the plant for mulch. Put them underneath like so. You wanna do it this way and take off what you don't need and the leaves that are old and aren't preferable for a lay so that you can get to the leaves without damaging or hurting the plant. We continue to ma'e ma'e, clean off the leaves that we're not gonna use and put them underneath the plant. Once we've gotten all the brown and older leaves, kind of got pukas or holes in them, we've gotten to the more preferable leaves we're just gonna take a few. We're not gonna take all. We never take all from a plant. That's kind of like over harvesting and we never want to do that, yeah? We also don't wanna impact or hurt the mu'o. This part of the plant is called a mu'o in Hawaiian and it's a sacred part of the plant. It also represents new growth and regrowth. So I'm just gonna take a couple for this lei I need about, let's say, just to be safe, I'm gonna take 10 leaves, okay? And I'm starting to get to the mu'o, so I'm gonna leave that part alo alone and I'm gonna gather from another stem or area of the tree. Now we have 10 leaves and we're ready for the next step. All right, now for our second step. We call this step holoi. Holoi means to rinse or wash to make things clean. So I'm gonna put the leaf, or this part of the leaf is called the lauhoi, meaning um, representation of a paddle. Can you see the paddle? Looks like a canoe paddle. So we're gonna rinse the lauhoi from anything that might be living on it, because it is something from nature, and insects and other creatures live on these plants, such as our mo'os, and they like to uh, do their business on these lau, on these leaves. So we're gonna make sure it's clean and there's no mo'o poop on top or any insects or anything like that because remember this lei is a representation of you and whatever you put into it is what you're giving to someone else. Find your midrib in the middle of your lau hoi. We call it the ku'au. So this step three is called hemo ku'au. Take off your ku'au. So you're going to Break the ku'au. Some people use their teeth, okay, 
teachers who are in the classroom, if the students are having a really hard time, you can take the scissors and help them along or teach them how to use the scissors properly and just barely cut the kuao so that it separates from the lao hoi, yeah? And you're going to pull back the lao hoi and take off the kuao, the midrib. When you separate it, there might be just a little bit still connected here in the center, and you can separate them, take them apart. If they're not perfectly even, that's okay. Once we've done all 10 leaves, we'll go on to the next step. Now for step four, ho'opalu palu, or to soften your leaves. You're gonna put your leaves out in the sun in an open area where the sun can, can touch them and make them nice and soft. It'll be about an hour or two before they really soften up. If it's a cloudy day, you wanna leave them out for as long as three to four hours. You'll know that they're done because they'll start to change color into a darker, deeper green. All right, for the last and final step, step five. We're gonna make the lei, the part you've all been waiting for. And the type of lei that we're gonna make is called hilo. Everybody say hilo. Hilo means to, to twist or to twine something together. So we had our leaves out in the sun for a couple hours and they're nice and palu palu. And the way we can tell is we take them and if they scrunch up like this without making hardly any cr cr uh, crackling sound or they don't tear or rip when you do that, you know that they're ready. So our leaves are nice and palu palu, they're soft and they're ready for the hilo lei. So you're gonna start off by taking one piece of your lao hoi. One hand is twisting out and one is twisting in. We get our leaf started, just as if you're twirling your hair, you're twisting, okay? You're heloing. Once you've twisted, you ask a friend or a partner to hold one side for you. And if you don't have a friend or a partner, you can do the old toe technique, where you wrap it around a toe and twist, okay? But I've got my partner here, Brennan, Lucky me. <laughs> so I am going to have him hold while I twist the lay. And I'm going to bring it together and twist. Okay? So I'm twisting each section of the lay, each side of the lay, and then I'm twisting them together. That's called hilo. Uh, what happens when you run out of leaf? You twist one in. Just gently put it in line with the leaf that is running thin or you're running out of it. And again, you keep twisting. You're twisting the leaf as well as twisting it together. Now, you wanna make sure that your lei is nice and tight. I prefer to have the shiny side of the leaf out. It makes the lei hilo shinier in texture when you're um, making the lei. And you just keep twisting. You're twisting out and you're twisting in. One hand is twisting out, one is twisting in, like that. Okay, and then you're bringing them over each other as you twist. So I'm coming to the end of the lay and sometimes they line up nice and ev even at the end and sometimes they don't. You're just gonna go to you can't really go anymore, or it's really thinning out, and then you're gonna make just a knot at the end. Just gonna knock or tie the end. 
Try not to pull too hard where you rip or break it off. Okay. And then the last thing you're gonna do is kind of look at your lay. Some people like to have like the tails sticking out or um, little threads like this. They, you know, it looks natural. Um, I enjoy that look, but some people like it to look very um, clean and neat. So if you enjoy it being clean and neat, you're just gonna go around and kind of clean up the lay, clean up areas that you don't want to necessarily see with your scissors. And be careful, of course, with your scissors. You don't want to cut your lay. So now you have your finished product. And it's up to you if you'd like to make it an open end lay, like so, or close it up. And the way to close it up is to take that loop that you originally started with, that I had Brennan hold, and send the knot, the tail end, or where you finished off, through that loop. And you have a nice, round lay. Now if it's your first lay it might not look like this um, and that's okay. With practice you get better and better. So keep practicing if it doesn't quite look like this and if it looks better than this right on. Um, but one thing to remember with anything in Hawaiian culture the first time you learn to make something whether it be a lauhala mat or a lauhala hat or a lei or anything, poi, the first thing you should always do with that first ori original product that you learned um, is give it away. <laughs> and sometimes that might be hard to do because you really love it. But the idea is, is one, you share that aloha with your friend, and two, each time you make the lei, you get better and better. If you don't give it away, you stay the same. So you should always give it away and share the aloha and share that knowledge that you learn. Have fun making your lay in your classroom and don't forget to share your ike, your knowledge, your aloha with someone else. <laughs>